Welcome back everybody, Karen Ryan here from South National Council Art Centre to do more painting with you. So we're going to choose a little winter scene today and I'm just going to take you through all the materials, the paints and the brushes and then we'll get started. Okay, so this is our palette here and since it's a nice wee winter scene, so all the sort of winter blustery colours, we've got fallow green, that's quite a dark green that's in your set, you should have that. Um, if it's not dark enough, you can put a little bit of blue in it and a little bit of paint grey. So be sure to have that and a nice light red. And in fact, I actually think that's crimson. But the crimson's there to mix with the blue to give us a nice lilac and purple. You can see a lot of that through there. So I'll show you nice ways to mix that. But I believe you've got a nice purple in your set, so you might not have to mix it. I'm going to show you how to do it anyway. And I've got magenta because that's quite nice mixed with the blue. This is ultramarine. So that's fallow green, crimson, magenta, ultramarine, paints grey, a little bit of yellow, and your white, of course, for mixing. Okay, now I've got an extra little palette here because my palette's pretty full, and I'll probably do a bit in here just to show you how to mix some of the colours. So, you can pick up how to do some of the colours as well. Okay, so now I'm going to go into the brushes. You should have this in your set. Now you should have a flat brush like that, but it doesn't matter if it's a round brush like that. You've got the both of them are quite good for doing big areas and trees and skies and things like that. I just like the flat brush for drawing out lines and things, but you've also got a flat brush as well, so that's what I call a wee drawing brush. So that's good for doing all your layer anyway. Okay, so one of these big brushes you'll have in the set. You'll have a round brush which is pointy for doing detail, that's good for doing the leaves as well, the wee flicks for the leaves. And a wee tiny brush for smaller detail, maybe like the wee house, the wee cabin. Okay, so we'll get it started. We'll get going with this. And then of course you need plenty of tissue because if you're using big brushes, you're going to work with a lot of water. So you need to soak up quite a lot. Okay, so just to get started here, um, I'll just bring this over a little bit. Uh, and usually when I start a picture, this is just one of the ways that I start. If you go around about the middle of the board, put a little bit of blue on your big brush. If it's a round brush you've got as your big brush, maybe use your little flat brush because it's better to draw it. So halfway across the board, if I go here with the cottages, oh, just put that over here. Just go under the halfway line, just about an inch under it. So what we're going to do there is half that, roughly, and then about an inch under it, we're going to put a little mark, and that's going to be where your wee vanishing point is, where the cottage and that is. So blue is a good colour, a nice neutral colour, and it's good for acting as shadows underneath things as well. Um, so that's good for doing your drawing. You can do this with your pencil if you like, but I've just got into the way of the brush and it's quicker and I can rub things out as well and paint over it if it's wrong. So all I need is just a little area there where the horizon's going to go. It's just as far as the eye can see and it's like a wee path here. This is water, but it's taking me all the way up to the vanishing point here. Now, I probably mentioned before, the vanishing point is usually off the centre. So we'll just sort of do a wee bit of extra mark under there so that we know it's over there somewhere. Maybe a wee bit further over. Okay, and we'll be cottage just sit there, so that's giving us a wee light for that. Okay, so the smoke is up there like that, so we'll do a wee sort of flat bit there and then the snow going up like that. And I've got room for a lot of cottage for me, and we don't want that bang in the centre either. Because when things are bang in the centre, you tend to just look straight at it instead of the important things in the picture, like the vanishing point and everything. So what we'll do, we'll just leave the area there where the cottage is going to go and that's off centre, so it's to the side. So that's my centre, the wee cottage is going to sit in there, so that's fine. Or the wee cabin, I should say, the wee log cabin. So right behind there, the ground goes up a wee tiny bit like that because there's so many rounded trees goes up there. Okay, so that's all we need to do. So I'm just going to wash my big brush, a little bit of blue on it, but that's fine. And I'm going to take 
white and a little bit of Payne's grey and a tiny little bit of green. Now you can mix it on the palette like that if you like. Keep it fairly light. And I'm just going to leave that for light. And I'm going to just do a lot of this right about it. I'll just leave a piece of that arch right there for the light. And spread this as much as we can. Better start them off light. Now if you go around in circles with your brush, that's you filling in all the greens and you get good coverage on the board to see if you get any bare bits on the board. So just roll it that until you fill it all in fairly quickly. You wouldn't be long in doing this. <coughs> um, and we can start as we get further up a little bit, we've got more green and a little bit more grey. The good thing about sketches is you can practically mix them on the painting rather than on the palette. I can put grey straight into that. Quite strong that green, so just make sure your brush is wet enough to blend it all in. It's a wee bit darker up there, but don't let the sky get too dark because you've got trees to put on and you want to see some light through. Like that. So if it gets dark, just adds a little bit more light, but keep the green in it so that it's darker than the sets of you. Now, some people use even bigger brushes than this, so it's up to yourself. Bigger brushes just does it a bit quicker, but it's just really what you're comfortable working with. Now, as the brush dries off a little bit and there's nothing else on the brush, that's a good stage to go in and go over this a little bit, a wee bit more so that you don't get lines. If your brush is too wet, you end up with just big patterns and lines everywhere. But this is a good stage to get to. As I'm, I just use my finger sometimes when it gets to that stage, it's almost drying out, but it's not quite dry. It's still wet enough to blend. Just watch the new brushes, sometimes you can be here on the palette on the painting. Right. So, you want to get this all filled in first. Lots of white. So you, you can actually do that. You can put white, green and grey on there and then just mix them all together like that. So that quicker as well. I so want to create some light up here so that it's shining through the trees. Not too light, just a sort of lighter version of that. Right, I'm really done with the sky now, so that's, that's enough. And I'll probably put wee touches of lilac and things through it as well later, a bit more grey. So that's just the base and now, just to get started. And just an extra bit of white on there. And if you just put a little bit of white like that and sort of blend it, it goes kind of smoky. As long as the under paint's a little bit wet and the top paint's dark, that'll blend nice for a bit of light. And I usually sometimes just take my finger instead of the brush. You can use the brush if you like. I put an extra little bit of white, just wipe your finger and just sort of blend that to make it a little bit brighter again. Bring your finger or your brush and just sort of, if you dry your brush a little bit and just kind of mould it in to it fades it out. That gives you some nice bit of light there and you can go even lighter. Okay, so what we've got going on there is some dark stuff here. This is just like trees, like six foliage, like a forest of trees in the background. Now you can use your big brush or your small brush, but I think your big brush is maybe better for doing this. Although, if it's a round brush you've got, I would go for that brush, which is flat, and I'll show you just how to do some of those little trees. I'll just use a flat brush just to show you this. So this is my small drawing brush, it's got maybe a half inch right? So a little bit of grey, a little bit of green, no white this time. And you can stick a bit of pink or something in it as well, just gives a nice kind of purple effect. So what you want to do is just sit on this line like that, really nice and thick, and then take a little brush and do the centre piece, like that. 
and then take the corner of your brush and come down both sides, make it look like a little fir tree. And you can see underneath still pretty wet, so it's probably best going on when it's a bit drier. But what you can do is you can just add to that. That's a nice and dark at the bottom. A little pink's nice, it just gives it a nice green. Bit of strength, they have a nice colour. So just do another one, you can do them different heights if you like. So I'm just using the corner of the brush and the point of the brush. Right, and you can just take them up. Keep them all dark at the bottom. So not bother about too much detail here because they're going to be covered with the trees. I just want some dark stuff and that's quite nice next to the light. So we'll go back and do a lot about them with that. We can use your paints grey. If you want your paints grey a wee bit stronger, you can use a little bit of this ultramarine in it. Also, sort of black when you do that. Oops. Um, so, what does it go to? Purple. We will be using some purples here. So, here's a wee thing you can do as well. We're going to make that quite sort of misty there, like that. You can do that and then go back with a wee strong one. Some stand out as if there's rows and rows of them. But you won't see an awful lot of them with the big trees on them. So you can just do the same on the other side. Um, so I'll just do that kind of quickly. The now, screw all those colours together. And if you hold the brush on its side, like this. I'm going to put the little cottage around the bow right there, just make sure I'll use that as my centre piece here with that wee so, so I'm going to put my wee cottage about there. So I won't put my tree behind the cottage right now, I'm just going to start here. So you can do this kind of thing. You're not going to see much detail on the trees anyway, but you really want them to be dark at the bottom there, so get as many an inch rich colours as you can at the bottom there. So I've got loads of paint on my brush, right, on both sides of my brush, and I'm just putting it on really thick, and I'm using the side of the brush like that, and I'm going up and down like that. You can go back and do some more detail later. You can even do like this, make it powdery there, and then go back in a little bit darker again. Mind your blue makes it really dark. So you're just doing a lot of impressions of trees there and we're going to put these big trees here over the top of it. So it's a little bit light here, but I'll go back and put more into that later on. So again, I've got quite a lot of paint on each side of my brush. If you just sort of clean it on your palette like that, on your paint, and that gives it a little bit of depth there. So while I'm letting that dry a little bit, I'll do a little bit of the snow the now for you. And I'm just going to take the white. And we'll just put a little tint of the green in it. gives us a nice and minty green, but it's mainly white. And we're just going to sort of do that now. It's quite nice if it's still a bit of white that I don't find it just blends into it. And a little bit there. You can sort of do these at little angles like this, so that it sort of goes in and out with some of the trees. And then just fresh white. You go through a lot of white in this picture. So that's the start of the snow. So before I do any more, I'll do the wee cottage, but I'll do this sort of really linear perspective line here, and it's just like a wee river icing over here that's going up here. So 
don't worry if you've not got the exact same lines as I do, it's just for the impression. So we'll just use this colour here for an outline. And we'll sort of start where the cottage is going to go. Uh, I keep saying cottage, I think it's just a wee sort of log cabin in the woods. So we're going to just kind of set it around about there. Um, I'll just do a wee sort of bit like that. Just watch it's not in the centre. Maybe take that over a little bit more, take it off the centre. If you do anything like that, just do a little bit of white in there. So you don't get too many lines. Right, we're going to take this little dark bit now. So to do the little cottage, we want it to look quite small because these lines take you all the way up there. So we're just going to do something tiny. You can be sort of matchbox. One, two, three, three little lines. And the roof is quite deep. So we can bring that down like that. And then like that. And a little chimney. Two wee lines for the chimney. And then there's a little sort of fire burner log thing here at the side. So the extra thing. Okay. So that bit will be into now. So I'm going to do my lines now beside it. Now that I've got that in. What I might do is, is clean this little brush with some fresh white so that you can see the snow around us. So I'm going to take that up there. A little bit of white there just to fill this in. And that's going to sit there like that. So I'm going to wash the white off now, get my dark colour, little outline. And I'm just going to deepen this round a little bit more like that. And another one like that. Now these lines are all lying flat. Make sure they don't go up because they'll look like the ground's turned up. Make sure they're all lying flat. I'll just check that and show you how to do that. Uh, put a little bit of white in here. Let's just show you this a little bit. Right. Just leave a little gap, probably the width of your finger, not even that. And come out there from one starting there. A bit deeper. Now, just so that I know what that is, I'll fill that wee bit in. Why you just so that we know that that's the ground there. And also, just so that we don't get mixed up with any lines, just keep this light in the middle of the now. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure we've got nice dark lines that you can see. So there's one going like that, one curve around like that, and one that you can hardly see there. It just sort of goes around like that. And then there's another one. So you're just doing flat lines like that, and we sort of toppers in like that. So that's this little bit. And then there's, I wouldn't even bother counting them. One, two, three, four, but it doesn't really matter what you get in. So this one might come out a little bit further. And then there's a sort of big one. It's almost like a Christmas tree shape. And then it comes around like that. A little bay there, and another little bit. And you just go to the other side and they're right across from it. So this one might go back a little bit. There's a wee tree here. Now, so you've got your little cabin there, the tree further back so they're not overlapping each other. So this is probably where I do the tree. So I'll just put a little mark there and this little bay comes round like this. Probably doesn't even come out as much as that. And then the water just kind of opens up. I think there's a few wee rocks here, so you can do that. You can just bring the line to the end, whatever you like. Okay, so I'm just going to fill in some of my snow with the white and just a little bit of the, the green. You know, so that green's quite wet, so I can wash my brush now, dry it, and get as much white as I can. Take your white right up to your line, let it touch on the green, and it'll spread through a little bit like that, so it's a little bit whiter at the edges, and your lines are spotting. Okay, so the trees go together, we fresh white. 
these will get freshened up at the end anyway. Just get your, you just make sure these lines are flat. That one's going to pull a little bit, but I'll straighten that off and a little bit of white under it. So that can happen, but don't worry. Just go right under it like that. Make sure they're nice and flat. So all those lines should be lying nice and flat. And just take your saw right back to there. As I say, we'll just do a lot of white. And this snow sort of disguises the lines a little bit, but we really need to keep them for the shadows in the water. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is a little bit of white and just a tiniest little bit of lemon. And I'm just going to fill this in, almost just kind of strip here like that, you know, get some colours in there. And if I take a little bit of yellow, put it there with a little bit of green, this will be quite bright. But I can tone it right down with the grey. And just in the, the corners of the water, just a bit of that. Put that in there. You can put that more grey in it. So see, I'm using my finger, but you can use a brush. It's just a bit of a bad habit to get into. But I use my finger a lot because I can. I've not got much water on my finger, and sometimes I just want to blend a little bit. And sometimes the brush is just too wet. So sometimes it's hard to avoid using your finger. So you're just going to bring in little bits from the side, I'll put a bit more grey on them. And the more colour that you can put in the water, the better your highlights will come up. So it's a bit green now, but that's fine. Right, I'm going to just put some highlight through the bits where it's really highlighted. So this bit's going to be really light, so I definitely want Put some highlight right down the centre of the water. I'm putting it on kind of thick around and I'll spread it. Trying to brush it off a bit, I've got a lot of green. Sometimes if the other paint's still wet, it can dry through quite. So my brush is a bit drier now, so that's. Gives you nicer lines. Spreads a bit nicer. And we'll go back in there with a lion can all sorts. So now that this is drying, I'm going to go in there and put the, the trees in. But just before I do, you want to get a bit more light in the sky, but you want your brush to be really quite dry at this stage. Make sure your white's nice and fresh. So just pat it on like that first and colour the greenhouse in the So I've got some trees to do behind the house so I want this to be behind them. So I'm just patting it so that it doesn't run too thick. As I say, you can use your brush, you can even use one of these a wee bit damp. Just sort of blend it through like that. A bit wee bits, it's a wee bit more watery white now, but that's all I want right now. It's just to make that look as if it's fading away. But I don't want to make it too light because I'm going to do some sprinkles on that like snow. So if, it, if this is white and that's white, we'll snow will show up. Okay, so that white is going to come right around the cottage there because that there is your action point. Those lines take you all the way up. Through there. Okay, and I'm just going to double check. Let me push it a bit now for the back. You can overlap things as well. Okay, so I'm going to use this big brush. In fact, what I'll do, I'll use a small brush because I think it's a small brush you've got in your set that, which is flat. And if you take the small brush, you can put a bit of green, pink, anything in it. And this is for the trees. And it doesn't matter how many you've got, as long as you've got, you've got them sitting in different directions, different heights. So what I'll do is I'll just put my markers in. I'll 
put one there and I'll extend that now and I'll put one higher up Yeah, I'll thicken them up later on, just get them in first. And then I can put some down here, I'll put one or two more up here. This one could come a bit more. It would make, see if you get them at different heights, it makes them look as if they're behind each other. They're not all sitting in a row. So, Make sure you get them nice and dark. Mind you, you're dark blue because that's nice and strong. That makes it earth and darker. And paint some little bit of water in there. It's good for doing lines when it's a bit of water. You just remember to go back in and thicken it up because if you leave water in your lines, it looks quite weak when it's dry. You can even do one like that and one at the very edge. Sort of. Because if it's just two. Right. And we'll do the shadows later. Okay, so that's that little bit in. Now, you can do the same at the other side with the trees at the other side. But I'll just do one or two now so that we're not taking too long to do them. So there's one. Maybe one higher up. And one maybe down there. Maybe down. Now I'll get a little bit of blue in that and if I put a little bit of pink in it, it'll turn sort of lilac and that's really nice with your shadows. Like the light's going to be coming in there so there'll be a nice shadow there. Just drag it out with my finger because it makes it look a bit weaker. Like a shadow so it's not too strong like the tree. And then there's one there as well. So we'll go back to that. So, and don't worry if that happens, we can get any of the whites and all sorts, that's fine. Um, and the same here. Now just because it's a bit more open there and the light's coming in a bit more, you might want a bit more pink in it so that it looks a bit more sort of my keep looking a bit softer. So these ones are sort of coming down like that. Might want them a little bit stronger. Okay, now there's quite a lot of lilac on the picture, so I'm going to clean my brush and show you how you do a nice lilac. Now, I think you've got a nice purple in your set, all you need to do is add white. But I'm going to show you how to do a nice lilac because um, if you take uh, ultramarine and magenta, if you've not got magenta in your set, I think you have actually, you've got a nice pink in your set and the red. Take the one that's most pink and a nice strong blue and when you mix the two together, you get a nice violet. Now, that's probably too strong for what I'm looking for. So I would just take a bit of white. Now just start fresh on the side there with some white and that gives me a lilac. Now you can tone it down with a tiny spot of grey as well lots of light. So there's tiny little bits of lilac like that that you'll just put all over the picture. They seem to be sort of near the edges of here where the, the snow is. It's like a shadow. I just kind of put wee bits of that and that's quite nice when it goes on when it's a bit wet. Now if it's too strong could you just put another little bit of grey in it? And a bit of white. And if that's not mixing too well, we you can just put a tiny wee spot of white. I think the white's getting a wee bit yellow on it now, but that's okay. It's just a soft, this 
So we can take bits. Just watch it doesn't look too stripy. That's where you might need a bit more sort of white round about it just to soften it. So it's wee things like that. And uh, quite a lot around here. And it's quite nice even just to overlap some at the edge of the water like that as well. Coming through your green that sort of softens down the green a bit. So all the colours that we started with just become like shadows under the water there. So we've also got some of this lilac up here as well, so we want this to marry into that so that it's all balanced. And that should look nice, so your shadows are nice and lilac, you know, you can even come down there like a tiny bit more lilac. And we'll go with the trees a bit sharp and we can do a few more trees as well. So just as you come to the end of these, it's getting lighter because this light's coming through, so you can make them a bit more lilac, you know. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is use this lilac a little bit round about here. Now, if I just put it on like that and wet my brush, Now just keep it kind of damp for that, tiny little bits of white. Now if you do that, and just get tiny wee bits of lilac coming in. But make sure you can still see the greens through as well, because it goes really nice with the greens. And watch if you can use your finger pots on it, and just mix some green in. So it's just to bring in the lilac again. Just put a little brush and spoil the bits of that, soften them a little bit. If it's thin enough, you're going to have shoes a bit. Okay. So I'm going back with this little brush again with the PC. This time you can even use a bit more of the blue to make it darker. And we're just going to make all these wee bits a bit darker so that we can see all the wee in the bits. And again, some of these get into the water, as I say. Anything that makes the water brighter, these dark bits make it nice and bright. A couple of wee rocks here, so I'll show you how to do them. Rocks can be done with palette knives as well, but I'll show you how to do it. So a little bit of paint grey. And so spot of white. Can, this is where you can add a bit of oil in the white to bring that back into the picture as well. So some of them might be a little bit white, but that light's coming through there, so the tops of them will be a wee bit lighter. And just make sure that you clean all the light off your brush and get it really super dark for the bottom. So I'm going to start pulling some of these through the sort of dark bits. You can do this in stages, you don't have to do it all as quick as I'm doing this here. You can let bits dry and go back. Sometimes it's better for bits of it dry out a little bit for you. So I'll go in there and put a wee lump of snow there. I just wanted to pull that back a little bit. You sort of find when you're doing a picture, you see the bits that you want to change a little bit. So these are much darker now. Okay, so I'm going to make sure I'm still looking green and showing as well, but I'm not losing that. It's where the shadow will we'll see the green coming through. That's just reflecting off the trees above. So I'm a bit of grey and the green to keep it nice and dark. Okay, I'll 
going to let that dry a little bit. Actually, what you can do, you can just wet the brush. And what's left on the brush, just drag more of them through. So if you're joining them up, that way it leaves the light in the middle a bit more. Um, while that's drying, I'll work on the trees at the top and I'll go back and put some lilac in it. So a big brush again for the trees, it doesn't matter if your brush is a round brush, all the better actually for the trees. So your palette green, going to mix that, put a little bit of grey into it, put a bit of yellow into it as well. Quite a strong green, so lots and lots of green in it. You can even put blue in it if you want some darker ones. So nice and chunky and thick. So you can't really see the branches, but you can actually take a, a little brush like that and do some, just a few of the, the dark colours. And you might, just in case you see branches coming through, you just do a little wee curve like that, one off your hair and one off your hair like that. So yeah, these sort of squirrely lines. Chances are you might not see them, but it's, it's good to have them in case you do see them. Right, so we're just going to put another tree here. So I might put this one up a little bit higher. And yeah, it can go to the side a bit as well. Make sure your brush is nice and moist when you do this because Easier to get your lines in. I won't see the shadow on that one. Right, so I've still got this wee brush that I can do some more branches. Just make them all one that one and another, like that. But you probably don't see them that much anyway. Right, so I'm going to take my big brush now, dip into the green that I've just made up, and you're just kind of doing that. If you try and fill in quite a lot of the corners of the, the page there, um, that gives you a nice wee frame line so that it makes you look through the middle a little bit more. So, so the more I close that in, the more you kind of zoom into the light in there a little bit more. Just flip your brush if it's a round brush, you can just, the round brushes are actually really good for doing the, the branches, uh, the, the foliage. So just fill as much as you can up there. But I'll just leave one or two little bits of light. The colour. Then leave some spaces in between. Now I'm going to leave some space here to do some more little bits of my work just before I put any more foliage in, but that, that should be alright. So I've still got some lilac on my palette there, so a little bit of light. I just want a retouch of this sort of. And I'm just going to wet my finger this time. Just not too wet, just to sort of mold them into the background a little bit. Lilac gives you a sense of distance as well because it's a sort of misty looking colour. Um, it's used quite a lot for distant hills and anything that's distant. Lilac's used for so many things. It just makes it seem look a bit nicer and it makes it softer down there as well. Okay, so I'm going to put a couple more little bits up there. Just watch it don't touch on the green too much, yeah. but it softens everything in the picture. Right, I'm going to put some oil in the water now because we want to match all these up with this. So I'm just going to sort of flick it across the bottom like that. Almost give it a sort of wee sheen. And then I'll put my highlights in the bottom. Right, 
So if I do that eye look simply like that, I'm just going to clean my brush. I might actually use my wee round brush now, just for the sake of getting a clean brush. And I'm going to use some more fresh white. And I'm just going to freshen up the snow now. Just especially at the edges. And you should only have lines at one side, not the other side. So you can put your snow, you can even overlap snow, breaking through some of the lines. Makes it look good. See the straight line that's here, you can sort of set your snow up like that. And you can break through some of the lines a little bit as well. Just make sure your brush stays clean. No tints of any other colour in it, just nice fresh paint. That's how I tend to use my fingers sometimes. So that's good when that's broken like that, so it gives you the impression that the snow's kind of falling over. Mm -hmm. And the snow will always stand out if you put darker tones above it like that as well. There's a wee bunch of trees here, I'll show you how to do that. So I'm just going to get a little bit more of some minty greens just sort of coming in and out. So if you just do that now again, it shows up. You can do this for a while like too. It just shows up the snow more when there's a colour next to it. See, it's nothing when there's nothing beside it, but when you put a wee colour beside it, it'll make the white look white. White's not anything on its own unless it's got a contrast. Like that. And we'll put a bit of white in there because that's too much green. So, whoops! You watch that. That might be one of those little happy accidents here. There you go, we've got more colours in the snow now. So, we're just going to dry the brush there. Get some fresh white. That might leave a wee tint, which is absolutely fine. Might want to show you a bit more sort of lilac -y tones down the bottom of this, so I'll just pick up some of these. That's absolutely fine. Um, so I think here we've had a wee sort of bit of here jumping out here with the trees. So back to the little drawing brush again. Dark colour, greens, grey, green, anything that's dark. And I think it was round about here. It was actually really light, it comes out here. And there's a little tree sticking up there. Oh, that's it there. A few little branches on it. You can do this with a wee tiny brush as well. In fact, I'll show you that with a wee tiny brush. There's wee thick bits here, wee bit of growth. And wee tree get up there. You might see a little bit of snow. So, just to show that in the water, just leave a little gap and then do another wee sort of line across here. And then what you can do is put the one quite thick and then just pull, pull some down like that. And you might see the reflection of that tree way right down there. Okay. And don't worry if you make a mistake, you can just use your white, your white and beside it just to tidy it up. So 
smoking that because that pink was a wee bit strong, but I quite like a bit of that in it, so that's, that's all right. You can put more little bits of pink and things in it. In fact, I might actually put a little bit of pink in my mix when I'm doing a lilac for a lot of the collections. A lot of highlights, I should say. On these, so that's, that's a little bit of rocks, which I'm going to make dark because my brush was a wee bit in the sun. Wet side when I'm doing that. Okay, so that gives nice few lights to that. So to contrast that, just make your rocks a little bit darker. And it makes sure your brush is nice and not too red, just to if it's too red, it just goes too watery. And the rocks must be flat. If it's in the water or on the land, must lie flat at the bottom. Otherwise, it'll look a little bit like floating. Now, I'm just going to put a little bit of light between there just to show that there's water. I'll bring back with some highlights anyway on the water. Right, big brush for the highlights on the water. Just fresh white again. And that's all the way down here. So just flip them side to side. Move them quite quick like that, and then from side to side. It just gives you that light from the water. Nice and thick like that, and then pull them from side to side. Cut through the tree, that makes the tree look as if it's underneath the water now. And the lie looks nice with the greens and the greens. So that's the water. Now I'm going back to fill in the little house. So you only need tiny little brushes for this because it's so small. So white to start with on the roof. I've still got the little trees behind us to do and then that's us. So I'll make that nice and chunky and a little bit on top of that little cap. So to make that stand out now, I'll blend with the sort of colours that we were using. There were trees in the background. These might be a wee bit lighter, but that's fine. So that'll make the log cabin stand out. And everything's a bit wet right now. So I want to just get a few around here because I think my log cabin in this picture is a wee bit nearer but we can open that up with a little bit more light and that's okay. So that makes everything stand out better round about and it's just these jacket trees like that. We can do a few more. So you can get the detail and do a few more of them as well. That just when they get light and light, it gives you a sense of depth when it's all them back. Okay, so I'm just going to clean this now. And take a little bit of white. Just knock that one back a little bit. That's your vanishing point. And there, so you really want this to be more nice and light. Now, I'll just put a wee tree just sitting over on it. And that just finishes that up, all that off, so that gives you the, the distance there. Now, there's always a wee shadow bit of the house, the cottage view, that the, the light's hitting there, that'll be bright and this'll be dark. So we're just going to fill that in a little bit darker, so that's just my purples and greys again. And this one's a bit further forward, so it doesn't have to be just as dark. So where the trees are there in the roof, I'm going to just put a little line snow between the trees and the roof there. This is where you need your big brush and your chimney. Now, if 
I just put a couple of wee spots on there, and white. When that's dry, I can get a couple of tiny bits in here. A tiny bit of white and a little bit of that and to colour again. And that just makes it look like the light shining on your wee house and it straightens up everything there as well. And the hot on the side of the Now, a couple of wee trees here. Again, they're just for your wee flat brush, they're pretty easy to do. So I'm just going to sit here, these about here. I don't want to put them right across from that, so maybe down the here a bit. So it's just one little line there, and a little line beside it. Oh, it's a bit bigger. So we're just kind of doing this. And then the snow sits on top of it, and try and get them a bit greener. because we're going to set snow on these. What I'm going to do this time, I'm going to take the big brush and use your brown brush maybe for this. And nice and chunky. I'm just putting a little bit on the top. Leave a bit of dark. This might pick up some of the green, so just make sure it's nice and chunky. We'll just look like the walls for the time they're finished. So there you are. Now what I'm going to do this last thing just to finish off with. If you take your big round brush, maybe some of these, if you take your big round brush now, dry it off as much as you can, and then just make sure everything's off and then dampen it a little bit, take lots of white and just sit it on your palm like that with a little bit of water in it. Now if you just take this I just spray it like that a bit wetter. Make sure you get plenty of white on it. And that gives you your snow. I think maybe it's a bit too wet. That's 
brush is off is soft, but your brushes will be nice and new, so it'll splash even more. And just do that, get in my face as well. And do as much as you can. You can go back and do more if you like. Well, there you are. Two minutes in. I hope you enjoyed that, boys and girls. <laughs> <laughs>